Hello and welcome to Comic Book Junto Retrospective, which is for short going to be CBJ Retro. And what this is going to be is we're going to be having a conversation and looking back at things that we have seen long ago and have relationship with. And we're going to be doing it with someone who has a special relationship with it. I am your host. I'm Octavius A. Newman. I'm a geek culture philosopher. And I'm here with my co-host, Adam. Let's go Jorel. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's related. Adam Jorel to this theme. That's right. Great to be here. I'm excited to do this. Yeah. Because we've got someone here who I have a special relationship with, Daniel Maul. Give it up for Dan Maul. There it is. That is the sound of Krypton exploding. <laughs> In your honor. In your, we did it for you. you we know, did it for you. I was looking forward to a nickname. You got something? Oh. Got something. Oh. I'm here. That's okay. Well, so usually the, this is based on the first initial of my middle name. What is the first initial of your middle name? It's J. J. Okay. It's just an alley-oop. It's just another J name for you. That's it. Yeah. I got nothing. You got nothing? <laughs> wow, uh, Dan yeah. Jorel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I have no I have no J name. Rare is Sorry. the occasion when you get two Jorels. You, you caught me off. In <laughs> one small conference. Uh, oh, d- uh, Dan, Jimmy, like Jimmy Olsen? I don't know. Hey, yeah, Jimmy Olsen works. I'm, I'm on, I'm I on feel the, like you know if I may, Dan, I'll take Jimmy Olsen. You okay. can have Jorel. <laughs> All right. We just hand the nicknames around now. That. Okay, yeah. I'll take. Let's Jimmy go with Olsen. that. I, I feel like if anyone is Superman's pal, I'm Superman's <laughs> super pal. There you go. And and you are his father, his dad, of course. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. got the locks. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about Superman the movie. Mm-hmm. That is something from night. It's movies from 1978. Yeah. And the the general idea for this show, because we've never done it before, is to have a retrospective look at something that we've seen a long time ago. So I looked up the definition for retrospective so we can break that down. <laughs> this is yeah, right quick. This is Octavius starting his uh, hey, term paper. Listen. And he's got to get at least two paragraphs out of this. That's right. So this is about this. Let me explain what this is. <laughs> and now Here's I'm going to why tell I said you. it. And now I'm going to explain why I said it. Now for real, retrospective. <laughs> Looking back on or dealing with past events or situations. So the general idea is we saw this a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I had a special relationship with it. Dan, you as well. I knew every single word of the movie. I could have recited it at any point when I was what? four years old. Oh, yeah. Yes. Really? I would just go around walking. Well, I'd walk around just talking about talking about the movie and just saying the lines from the movie randomly. You'd be like, wow. gee, swell. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gee, golly, gosh. <laughs> Dan is a kid. Dan is a kid practicing his uh, Clark Kent run, trying to do the run. Oh, my god! And like, gosh. why can't I run like Clark Kent when he's yeah. racing a train? Suspended yeah. from invisible wires. Yes. Le- legs don't touch the, the ground. When people asked me how old I was when I was four, I would say over 21. <laughs> 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 that, that these are some deep cuts that I would not know had I not literally just watched this movie. So that's great. We have, as you can see, we have this relationship with this movie. But the idea is to look at it now hmm. and look at it retrospectively and say, how do I feel about this thing now? How yeah. does it stack up to who I am today? Yeah, and that's what we're going to do. Um, and the reason why we have Dan here, as you can see, because his relationship with the movie is special. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing for Adam and I to talk about a movie and talk trash about it and laugh about it. But when someone's here who can give a new perspective to it, that's why we want to bring Dan on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's just start with a couple things here. This movie was made 1978. Can we get specific here? There are several versions of this right, film. Right. So right. let's let's get specific with the one that we all watched most recently. Mm-hmm. I believe that we chose to watch the special edition, That's which right. I think was 2001, came out in 2001. I and think something like that. There's the original one in 78, there's the special edition, and then there's the Donner cut, which is three, three and hours. hours. It's like th- th- over three hours long. Yo! Mm. Th- th- do you have a relationship with the Donner cut? What did it mean to you when the Donner cut came out? Uh, I didn't watch it because I heard that, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard that Richard Donner didn't actually like that cut. Or there was one of the cuts. You might want to get closer to that, Dan. All right. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Hey. Hey. Uh, I heard that Donner didn't like the cut. Yeah. Mm. So I wanted, like, 
I like watching movies as the director intended, which yeah. is right. why the special edition is the cut for me. Yeah, right. yeah. okay, that, that makes sense. It is a lot of Superman. <laughs> That's it's actually not even a lot of Superman. It's a lot of other shit. That's right. Yes. It's like a lot yes. of small things that were purposefully cut from the film. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. and Donner was like, I don't even know why that stuff's in there. Like, we just we tried stuff and then we took it out for a reason. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to watch his vision of, of what this movie should be. That's valid. So, so that's the one we watched. We watched mm-hmm. that version. Um, so let's start off with, you got into this a little bit before. Why don't we talk about when we first watched this? Let's look like, tell me about what it was like when you were young watching this movie. I mean, I can't tell you how young I was when I watched it. Like it was, it was a movie. So I didn't watch it in 78. Mm -hmm. I was born. Where were you in 78? I was not even a thought in 78. I was, I was born (laughs) in 84. Mm -hmm. So I watched it probably because it was on TV. Right. I watched it because my grandparents probably put it on and Mm -hmm. I would just watch it all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, And we had it on video. You know, we would, we recorded it off the TV. Right. So I'd watch it just on repeat the whole time. That and the land before time. Mm -hmm. So I didn't watch it when, uh, when it debuted. I watched, it on, I watched basically the TV version of it, and then I would just watch it over and over again, and I would read Superman comic books, and I would buy Superman clothes, mm-hmm. and Superman was a big part of my childhood because I just watched it so much. Right. Mm. Uh, now I have a, a, a design agency that's called Super Friendly, mm. um, and my wife named it that because... I didn't it, know your wife named it. She did. Oh, because, you know, partially because of the affinity with uh, the Super Friends. Mm. Ah. So it like... It trickles into parts of my life even to this day. Wow. Well, that's, that's the origin story that's right the there. Wow. That's great. Adam, your relationship with Superman the movie. My dad has uh, uh, a fandom for Superman, like much like you. That's right. Uh, my dad loves Superman so much. Uh, and I was introduced, I think, to a lot of geeky stuff by way of my father. We, we would watch the Superman TV show with George Reeves. Mm-hmm. Of course, we watched all of the Christopher Reeves movie. All of them. We shouldn't have watched them all, <laughs> but we did. Uh, they're not all good. The black and white drone? <laughs> I'm, I'm talking like, you know, when he's riding a nuke, when there's a lot of interesting stuff that happens in the later yeah, films. That's true. Uh, we watch, you know, we talk about this all the time. My dad and I went to see Superman Returns. Mm-hmm. We both had a great time. My dad and I went to see Man of Steel. We both were very depressed, <laughs> hated it. Uh, but my dad's love for Superman has always been consistent. So watching this movie was like the pinnacle of Superman. It was the movie Mm. and even before comic book movies were a thing this was just like the greatest movie and i remember watching it it one of those films that you just watch repeatedly all the time on tv or on tape or whatever i would rent it multiple times in a row and and yet and yet watching it most recently tons of stuff that i either never noticed or totally forgot about yes like I mean, as soon as the, the the credits are scrolling in the beginning of the movie, I was like, Mario Puzo wrote this <laughs> from The Godfather? The, the God, That's right. The man who wrote The Godfather. That's right. Wrote this screenplay? What? All the golly goshes and G's? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I love that. I mean, like it makes sense. Marlon Brando's yeah, reuniting them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it suddenly, I suddenly understood. I had a depth now, and I could understand the film better. But when I was a kid, I would just watch it like crazy because it was an awesome movie. And Christopher Reeves was the coolest. And Superman at the time was incredible and wonderful. And now, as an adult, I feel like everybody's always dogging Superman for being too op. Or not having enough vulnerabilities or something. Or being not Batman, basically. Yeah, right? that, yeah, it's actually, it the argument is always like Batman is Superman. And people seem to think Batman is more complex and dark. And so he's, he's not. Well, well, yes, he is. Okay. But I'm just saying like. I'm just trying to clarify what's going on with you saying. Here. It's spoilers for a film from 1978. But this movie <laughs> starts with this baby's parents being decimated with a world exploding it it's dark it's true is it not it's dark so i have kids i have young kids and i often go to the website commonsensemedia.com to mm-hmm. find out like whether or not i should let them watch this okay movie. and the reviews on this one is like do not let your kids watch this movie. superman like, the movie no. superman the movie people like there is uh there's lewd dress there's Whoa. lewd talk from who there's the like, underwear on the outside that's uh, lewd miss testmacher <laughs> Oh. oh, okay, okay. Right, so it's like Tess Walker. Yeah, exactly. that lady. She's really uh, feeling Superman. It's true. Mm-hmm. Yes, 
Um, How am I? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna hold it because I, <laughs> I would. Like, I, want, I want to know more about common sense media. Yeah, what, yeah. What's, what else is objectionable? The D word. Damn. Oh. <clears throat> oh. What about the C word? Krypton. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there's some like so people are, are really upset. Parents in particular are really upset. There's some uh, they expect Superman to be a very wholesome movie, and because mm. it's not perfectly wholesome, they're like, I don't know if kids should be watching this. It Parental gu- it's rated PG. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Parental yes. guidance. But so was Jaws. Jaws was PG. Jaws is PG. Yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you know. Okay. Times change. <laughs> MPAA was just doing whatever the hell they wanted. Right. At the time. Yeah. My relationship with this movie. This movie for me is the movie, one of the movies that I would rent all the time. Yeah. Octave, are you renting that movie again? <laughs> yes, I am renting that movie again. How many times have you seen that movie? I'm renting it. You said I could get two movies. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like like same thing like the Batman 66 joints. Mm-hmm. Like I rent those over and over again. So I love this movie. I had a great time with this movie as a kid. I really enjoyed it. I have fun. As soon as I hear, bah, 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 Yo, listen. I'm just like, oof. Yes. I love the way this feels. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. However, comma, watching it now, I have notes. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I have notes. Well, let, uh, I mean, first and foremost, mm-hmm. as soon as the movie starts, John Williams score, the Superman theme yeah. song, yeah. I, it just made my blood... Like get, I'm I'm ready. I'm mm-hmm. I was so excited. I felt like I could uh, tie a, a a blanket around my back like I was when I was a kid and like yeah. jump off of my bed or something. Yeah. I was just taken back to that time. Mm-hmm. The, that that theme song is iconic. It is legendary yes. and it is so good. And it felt great starting the movie and hearing that as it drums up and it rises in volume and then that theme happens. And then thirty minutes later, they're still running credits. <laughs> and I remember, like, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, right. these joints, like, yeah. they front load all the credits. Yep. Yeah, no, no cold open, none of that. <laughs> no, none no, of that. no, 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 no. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, what? Like, now I want to talk a little bit about the the cast of this movie and like yeah. the impact that this had on the world and the culture. Because this, I can't think. Is this like one of the first superhero movies? Ah, uh, Flash Gordon would have been up there. Okay. You know? And the the Adam West Batman movie. Mm-hmm. Okay, right, 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 right. In the right. '60s. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it, it's probably up there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, in fact, I do believe Captain America had a movie. Uh, oh, way yeah. before. There's way before. That's right. And we generally right. don't talk on that. Yeah, but it's kind of like, did that actually happen? The Lost Years. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It should have been frozen and stayed frozen. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, Superman. I think. I think when I was when I was doing my research on this movie, I found out a couple things. One, this movie was supposed to be a two-parter. Oh, so Superman one, Superman two were supposed to be together. Did you know this? I'm assuming you knew this stuff, Dan. I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that they're makes supposed a lot to be of the, sense. Supposed to be together. That makes a lot of so sense. So similar to how Infinity War in game supposed to be together. Yeah. And because otherwise, I was like. We ain't gonna do nothing with Zod now. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. start the movie with these guys. Yeah. And then <laughs> in the second movie, they come back. So I actually watched the movie with some some of it with the commentary, the director commentary. Oh, okay. And they're talking about different things, and there's actually debating and arguing about different parts of the movie and the story and mm. how things worked out. And it's interesting watching it now, looking at the impact and superheroes and what they were doing at the time and how you know, comic books were seen as this thing and we have to believe that a man can fly and we got to pull off the, you know, like pulling off all this stuff yeah. and thinking about it now and looking at it and going, oh, I don't, I don't even know if the people who made it agree mm. with how Superman should be depicted mm. mm-hmm. from listening to the director comments. Sure, sure. Does that make sense? I, th- I think there's, like, so one thing that occurred to me is it was, because I was so young when it came out, it was my first intro to Superman. And because yeah. it's Superman 1, I would assume it's it's like lots of people's first intro to Superman. But then as I'm thinking about it, people have known Superman for a long time. Yeah, so Action Comics 1 was 1938. 1938. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the Max Flesher cartoons in the 40s yeah. and the George Reeves version in the 50s. So, like, there have been versions of Superman. And 
But this movie seemingly defined Superman. And yeah. I think that a lot of that goes to Christopher Reeve for defining who Superman was. Yes, and interesting who point. Kent is. Yes, that's a great um, point. And I think that that's like the pe- the context that people have. It's kind of close today when you look at like an Infinity War mm-hmm. or a, or an Endgame. You know, people know these characters already. And I was like, oh yeah, people knew who Superman was. Yeah. But this this movie had an opportunity to redefine that, and Christopher Reeve was a big part of that. Yeah. I also, you know, one uh, another thing that I found interesting there is like the the cast uh, and who they were supposed who were they yeah, yeah. they're trying to cast for Superman and Clark Kent. Do you know Muhammad Ali was in the running? They that? yeah, I Wait, heard that on. they had the they they I think somebody <laughs> was trying to talk. Who I don't know what it is. At the end of the day, I think somebody was trying to cast Muhammad Ali uh-huh. as Superman uh-huh. because they had a really hard time trying to find a guy who had the look and could move, not not but could act. Oh, okay. so they were literally like, you know, can you do? And you know how we talk. I can see him as Bruce Wayne, but I can't see him as Batman. Yes. I can see him as Batman, but I can't see him as Bruce Wayne. Yeah, that's not new. Like that's the same conversation. Like, can I see? this guy doing this. So they, like, and I think the casting director had Christopher Reeves and he kept showing it to them mm-hmm. and they kept putting it to the bottom of the pile. They like, were like, wow, why? Like, what, what was missing just, from Christopher? Christopher Reeves, to me, is the same that uh, 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 Robert Downey Jr. is to Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. I can't separate the two. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they have defined each other almost. And so in my mind, Christopher Reeves, because of the iconic portrayal of Clark as a, like a very straight-laced kind of bumbling fella, gee golly, and Superman, I, I cannot possibly imagine someone else doing it. Yep. Yeah. Wait, was this before or after Muhammad Ali and Superman boxed? That's I what know. I want to know. Because did Muhammad know. Ali say, well, I won that match. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's only well, first fair. of all, you know Muhammad Ali said he won that match. It's only fair. <laughs> yeah, of course he did. <laughs> Off top, but yeah, for sure, Muhammad Ali, Dan's right, was in the running for being Superman. Be. So once again, black people playing the roles of white people not new. Right. So they, Michael B. Jordan is Superman. That's not a new. No, guy. yeah, yeah, that is That's not. Interesting. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Don't, don't you wonder what? What would change? How would things be different oh, man. if Muhammad Ali did play Superman in 1978 and continued to play Superman all the way back? How that how Joker? Would, I mean, <laughs> that Joker Lex Luthor <laughs> thinks he can whoop me? Can't whoop nobody. Yeah. Like <laughs> he'd be like, like you gotta chill. Yeah, he's faster than a I, speeding bullet, and he can sting like a bee. You gotta update the second one. <laughs> you gotta sting good. like something else. That's good. Faster than a speeding bullet and sting like a blown up planet. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody would have to be black, you know, because there's this conversation going on right now about <gasps> Commissioner Gordon in this mm-hmm. new Batman movie is gonna be a black guy. I'm like, yeah, they're looking at Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that. So who does what does that make Batgirl? Mm hmm. You yeah, know what I mean? Certainly. She's either black or of multiracial or something like certainly. that. Certainly. So it would have to make... They're going to get Zendaya again. Krypton, <laughs> full of black people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which, by the way, I was looking uh, I was looking through Krypton, and uh, in all of those... <laughs> going to keep doing it. <laughs> in all of those fluorescent jumpsuits, yeah. uh, I, I saw nary uh, a person of color. Not Are the, one. I, I don't ain't know nobody, were... Listen, ain't nobody from Krypton black. Apparently, the bottom line, what, we, what they told us. Apparently, everybody is white in Krypton. Yeah, didn't. But I will say, oh, I would love <laughs> to get one of those turtleneck jumpsuits. You don't want those that. fluorescent turtleneck jumpsuits, so I can ride my bike at nighttime around Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> would love that. I don't know if you want to do that. Did you see the can, can, the way they start this movie? Is nuts. Yes, because <laughs> they yes. like. Let's get into y'all it. Let's get Superman. Into this. Yeah, love Superman. He fights crime. Yeah, love that. Metropolis. Yes, absolutely. All right. We're going to spend 40 minutes on Krypton. No one pronounces Krypton the same way. Well, first of all, it's all made of shards of glass. (laughs) I think it's Marlon Brando saying Krypton and nobody corrected him because at the time he was Marlon Brando. Yeah, what were you going to say to Marlon Brando? Like, he was going to raise his hand. So the whole movie was based off of we got Marlon Brando, we got Gene Hackman. Yeah. Step one. You know, Marlon Brando didn't memorize any of the lines for the movie. <laughs> Seriously, he made them have cue cards on set. <laughs> He's he over like, here like, Marlon Brando. Stella! <laughs> Stella! <laughs> Marlon Brando was reading cue cards the whole movie. And wow. they had something where it was like, uh, get, 
Get, Marlon Brando and Gene. Get close Hackman. to your mic. No, Marlon Brando and Gene Hackman. They tried to film all of their scenes in twelve days because they're like, these guys are going to be booked. Mm. Oh, we got to get all their scenes. Wow. In. Uh, because they were superstars, and Christopher Reeve got paid significantly lower than those guys because they yeah. were, you know, they were rock stars. When wow. you look on IMDb, Christopher Reeve, you would, who's the first person you would think Christopher Reeve? No, he's like third. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even show up early yeah. on in the beginning of the credits. Yeah. Well, that tracks, right? Lex Luthor is yeah. definitely making more money than Superman. That that, that just tracks. <laughs> we know that that's the case, but that is that's surprising to to, to hear. Yeah. Um, Kry Krypton and all the scenes on Krypton are odd. I kept thinking, look, Star Wars was happening soon. Yeah. So I mean, I, think I guess I think this happened. Was this before or after Star Wars? Star Wars was seventy seven. Yes, yeah, seventy seven. Yeah. So people before. from Star Wars, I think, were working on this. Yeah, that makes sense. Because the the beginning of this movie is mad sci fi, like yeah. really high concept sci fi, and it's very bizarre because there are subplots immediately introduced with General Zod and his his goons, and I guess they they've got the the Phantom Zone is like a weather pat a weather pattern in Krypton. It's just con always flying around, I guess. And that's why they have the dome. I suppose. Look out for the Phantom Zone. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. yeah. Almost got us that time. Bring your umbrella out because the Phantom Zone, I saw the Phantom Zone coming in. So uh, wild. That's wild. And then they're also bringing up the conflict between Jor-El and all of the, the other elders of Krypton. Yes. And I could not help but think of our current uh, 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 climate, pun intended, in, in which a lot of people are uh, global warming mm -hmm. deniers, mm -hmm. right? And I'm saying the, to, to these Kryptonians, like, step outside and take a look <laughs> at the fact that the sun is 30 feet away. Yeah. Like, it's, it's right there. The sun can hear you talking. Yeah. So how do you deny it? But... I'm also thinking about uh, uh, what is the name of the, uh, the the young woman who has been going to like the UN and giving impassioned speeches about global warming. She's like, recently. "You robbed, you robbed me of my future, and you come to me for answers." And it's amazing. And I'm thinking, Jarrell this whole time was saying, "Y'all, our planet's gonna blow up." And these goons are like, "No, nah, we're good. we don't believe." <laughs> like, yeah. like Jarrell, we need you to follow instructions. Yeah, please tell us your. Listen to us and do what we say. And this is all the pretense for a Superman movie. It's a, it's a, this is a, let me tell you something. Watching this as a grown man, this is a weird movie. It's crazy. I wonder what the fascination, fascination is with Krypton, though. Because, like, this movie, there's 40 minutes of Krypton before you even get to yeah. baby Superman. Yeah. You know, baby Clark Kent. Mm -hmm. And much less, you know, when he turns into Superman. Mm -hmm. But the same is true of Man of Steel, too. Right? Yes. Man of Steel, there's so much, you know, in Russell Crowe playing a lot of time Jor Krypton. Mm -hmm. And there's a show, Krypton, I haven't seen it. I don't know if you guys have seen it. No, but no like, I haven't seen it. I just don't think Krypton's that interesting. No. I, I don't think that's the that's the the draw for Superman. The but, draw for Superman is well, we maybe we can get into that, but yeah. It's not Krypton, but why do we spend so much time there? You I, know what that is? It's question. Crime Alley. Yeah, I guess it's Crime Planet. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's 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 the it's the it's the pearls, it's the gun, sure. it's the you know, falling on the knees and the looking up in the sky. It's I it's think it's I think that people, moment over and over and over again. Like we don't need like what they did with Spider Man. Got it. Radioactive. I don't need to see it. Yeah, I get it. I always have this problem when new movies come out or in, when uh, popular franchises are rebooted. But they love exploring the origins, yep. yeah. even when it's inappropriate. And I, I rail on this all the time. I don't want to know where the Joker came from. And when they come out with a new uh, Chucky movie, I don't really care what was going on with Chucky before his soul was transported into a murderous doll. Soul's there. It's not a soul now. It, well, now it's AI, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I just don't really care what happened before this. And I, I, th I think that's absolutely a good point and a good question. What is with Krypton? Why spend so much on Krypton? Since Superman was in pop culture for as long as it was, since 38 as a comic book and in the 50s with George Reeves and mm -hmm. on and on, mm -hmm. did we all really need that much buy-in on his backstory? In 78? I think so. Cause, really? Because you could have just had like his parents, that like, mom, pa, Kent, pull up well, I don't and find the spaceship, and I'd say, yeah, that, that tracks. I right. That. I think there's a difference between us like making a subjective critique yeah. of how they decided to tell the story. Oh, of no, the I'm movie. right. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I think you pressed the wrong button. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I, think there's, I think there's a difference between us saying, like, hey, here's how I feel about how they made the movie. Yeah. And going, well, how much of this do I need to let you know? Yeah. 
You know, and mm-hmm. in 78, it's, I didn't recognize it's called Superman the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, they had to let you know, this is a movie, by the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. they, we don't do that anymore. We don't go Batman the movie. We don't go Spider-Man the movie. Mm. So that even lets me think, like, in 78, there is a certain amount of this that's like, well, we're introducing you to this concept mm-hmm. of these comic book characters yeah. being in movies. And even now, when we go to movies, I think executives are still like, well, you got to make sure they understand how this guy came about. Yeah. And if they're doing it now, even a little bit less, but now you can imagine back then, they're still like, and I, and I also think they might think it's interesting too. Sure. Krypton wanna, is interesting. I'll play counterpoint to that. Go for it. Action Comics number one, mm-hmm. 1938. Like 40 years earlier, there's like a panel on Krypton. Mm-hmm. Sure. It's like one thing, it's like spaceship flies away from Krypton, and now we're on Earth. And then... Well, yeah. uh, let me let me, let me uh, hop on top of that. Mm-hmm. In the way that we started this podcast with Octavius reading uh, Google Dictionary, yeah, yeah, uh, I got to I got to get into it. So maybe let this, y'all know. Maybe the situation is the same because when uh, Donner says, "I'm going to make this comic book into a movie," he's like, ah, "I'm going to need to expand that panel in the forty minutes because yeah. yeah. I got to fill time." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I got three hours to fill up. I'm going to need to. Yeah, I got all these uh, radioactive fluorescent turtleneck jumpsuits yeah gotta do something so with let's these. See, i don't know let's put superman sigil on that and uh, uh i got all this crystal furniture mm. so why don't we just set it on krypton yeah you know i'm it's, it's krypton for me now I, it I'm, is not krypton it's krypton no it's no i repeat you got, you see i'm krypton not joining walk. you brando krypton. said it yeah krypton. no we, <laughs> we're not, not going brando. back to 78 and letting brando determine what we've been saying <laughs> yeah. for all these years yeah he didn't even know his own lines he was like what is it is it krypton Planet krypton. he's like it's krypton <laughs> keep it from now on <laughs> krypton. i want everyone calling it krypton around me yeah all right i have a theory about krypton and okay. why it's important to okay. this movie so i'll play the other side which Dude. is Krypton was portrayed as an ice planet, mm-hmm. right? It's like cold. The The conversations are cold. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's there to juxtapose the humanness of Clark and Superman okay. yeah. versus yeah. he came from this really cold alien place. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I know that. I feel that. that. I'll, I'll take it a step further and say it, it might not just be the humanness of Clark, but also America and how vibrant it is. Mm. And, you know, in this movie... Superman is fighting for truth, justice, and the American way. Yeah. Which it, is like... Now, in 2019, as yeah. I'm watching, I'm like, at what point did you become so patriotic? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Do you guys think that jor sent Kal-El to America? You know what's interesting mm. about, about that? Like, as I'm watching this movie, and you've listened to our podcast long enough to know, I have many, like, <laughs> digging here thoughts to be like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> what, what did you say? Kal-El, as I send you, these people are capable. They have the ability to be good people. Yeah. And it's like, how do you know that? But you must never interfere with their history and never change anything. Uh-huh. I'm like, why am I? What? Who? Like, who, is, who are you? Who this is, is Marlon Brando who making is things up. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm like... <laughs> like, I can't see the cue cards. <laughs> I'm like, I believe that you... Don't interfere, interfere. Don't don't interfere. With Richard Donner had to be American like, ah, oh, shit. I guess it's canon now. <laughs> <laughs> like if he like, said d- it, no, I'm I'm not doing any more takes, you guys. <laughs> Damn that's it. it. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. I, that's. I think that is a profoundly interesting question. Did Jorel intentionally send him to America? It's interesting because he sent he sent him to Earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And. Kaboom. Mm -hmm. The whole thing blows up. That's right. And while he's there, we're to believe that three years go by, and it's three years of Marlon Brando explaining to him as he's growing. Audiobook. What he ought to do. (laughs) It's a long time. Yes. And then he crashed. That was the first ever podcast. (laughs) (laughs) It was was Jarrell teaching his kid. (laughs) Right. Einstein. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Yeah. And then when he crash lands, we're like, all right, cool. There's this guy here. So me thinking, I'm going, you're an alien. Mm -hmm. You can fly. You can shoot laser beams out of your eyes. Mm -hmm. You have ice cold breath, leap tall buildings in single bound, fly, no pain, no nothing. Why are you a good guy? Why? Because as you were a baby, 
mm-hmm. someone was whispering to you in a voice like this. Mm-hmm. Sure. Why? Well, you know, now... Why the American... How did you get there? The modern interpretation of the sigil on Superman's suit, it, it is said it is Kryptonian for hope. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I think this... It, the, the only answer that I can come up with to your question, Octavius, is, is a meta one. And it's because we needed him to be a good guy because we needed an American hero Okay, because things were hard you know the cold war and, mm-hmm. and all this uncertainty and, and just like the, the complexity of, of living in America it's right. not as good as we tell everybody it is yeah. and I think we needed that hero and so that's that's what we've got when, when Joe and Jerry created Superman in 1938 they needed a hero they needed yeah. a symbol of hope Yeah, and so that's the movie that's made he, he is he is created to be that figure for us. And as a kid, totally buy it. Oh, yeah. However, as an adult, I squint my eyes at it. And I go, I don't know. Mm. And that's a good question you're asking, Dan. Like, did he send him to America? Because he seems to know exactly where he's sending him, right? He's sending right. him to Earth. We're gonna, we have, he has all these plans. There's, um, there's a, good, a good book, the Superman Red Sun. Yes. Know, that explores the what other side of it, which Russia? is like, if it was just a couple hours delayed, the Earth would have rotated that much more, and he'd mm. land, you know, and get found by a Ukrainian family. That's right. And he's now, you know, he's Russian. Yeah, yeah. And he works for, you know, the KGB. Yeah, right. and he's got the hammer and sickle on his uh, yeah. on his chest. Yeah, it's, it's it's an interesting exploration of, you know, did is is this all part of Jarrell's plan? I don't know. Yeah. Do you think you know, given given the times that we live in now? Given the the just the climate of the world, do you think that Superman still represents the same thing? Is he still uh, uh, truth, justice in the American way? Ooh, where has that changed? Because I, as I'm listening to Octavius uh, say, you know, I've got to ask a question: Why did you turn into a good guy? That sounds like a question posed by a man who has been hardened by the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, be like, I yeah. know better. Yeah, I know better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you listen. Like, if you don't, if you never listened to this podcast before, you know, I, that's me. I'm like, this is a story, yeah. you know. And as I'm watching this as an adult, I'm going, why are you like that? Mm-hmm. You know, you can do whatever you want. And there's a conversation that happens between my, my, uh, uh, Pa Kent and Clark, mm-hmm. and he's like. I don't know what you're here for, but I know it's not to da 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 play football. And he's like, score touchdowns. Score touchdowns. Yeah. And he goes, I'm not trying to show it off. And he asks a real question. Mm-hmm. If a bird flies and it just does what it was meant to do, is it showing off? Mm. I mean, every time I get the football, I can make a touchdown. That's for sure. Every time. Yeah. I mean, is it showing off and somebody's doing the things he's capable of doing? Is, no. is a bird showing off when it flies? And they... Don't answer it. And I'm like, can you make the movie about that? Mm-hmm. Like, cause that's cause that to me is like the the like the root of this. Why are you like this? Mm-hmm. Why aren't like because you just th- this this character now just strikes me as this like restrained, subdued, almost like fake. Mm. I never lie. Yes, you do. Mm. What you mean you don't lie? Why don't you lie? You're an alien. Are you saying that about Clark or Superman? I believe that Superman, like especially in this movie, I feel like Superman. You know how Batman's really Batman, mm-hmm. but he plays Clark, Clark Kent. Batman def- plays Bruce Wayne. You mean? Excuse me. He plays Bruce Wayne. I mm-hmm. definitely got that mm-hmm. vibe. Yeah. From this movie, yeah. Superman is Superman is Superman. He's Kal El all the time. Yeah. He plays Clark Kent, and then he takes his glasses off and sits up straight. Mm-hmm. You know. Sure. And I'm like, why is that guy like that? And I don't think the movie really explains why. It just tells me he's that way. Sure. You know? Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Do you buy that? I wish that they would have spent more time on the Kents. Because I think, I think there's a lot there. And I think that, that other shows do that. Like Smallville does that. Smallville was mm-hmm. great for that. Um, you know, there's a... Oh, I forget who, who, wrote, who wrote it now. But there's, a, there's like a young adult fantasy novel about Superman. Okay. And they explore like... I don't know, sophomore year, Clark Kent and yeah. why, and him just going through high school. And I think that there's a lot that, that you just kind of bake into you in the way that you're raised. It mm-hmm. reminds me a little bit of, of Brightburn. I just watched Brightburn recently. Yeah. And like the kid doesn't know he's an alien. The kid mm-hmm. doesn't know that he's not. And then he finds out. Right. And until then, he's just like, I guess I'll just be the kid that they raised him to be. So yes. I think there's a lot to be, to yes. be said for Ma and Pa Kent raised him to be this like 
humble meek kid because they're humble meek mon pa Kent. Yeah, right. Un- except that this dude can lift cars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's the only difference. Yeah. And then, my favorite scene in the entire movie is when he picks up the football and punts it into outer space. Because when they cut to the next scene and there's the train rolling, I'm waiting for the, the football to come <laughs> down blazing and just blast a hole through the train that Lois is on. Mind you, that Lois, I didn't recognize that Lois Lane was on the train. Yeah. So that means that Lois Why Lane Why doesn't Clark anyone Kent, ever believe me? It, yeah. Like Lois Lane and Clark Kent are like significantly different in age. I mean, he was, uh, Clark was hitting on Lana at the time. Lana was the first love. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's definitely the plot of uh, uh, Smallville. Yeah. Uh, Kristen Kreuk played Lana Lang. And, and that was a long running arc. And you, you never even meet Lois until like season 10 of Smallville. So she's mm. not even in the picture. And I guess this is just kind of the case with superheroes. You know, if you've been watching all of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, you might not know about Gwen Stacy. Yeah. That's a really significant part of Peter Parker's arc. Mm-hmm. Um, and a, an important character in her own right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I was talking about Lois all this time or Lana all this time, but yeah, that is in fact Lois on the train. So what do you guys take from this movie? Like what is this movie? So what's, what's the intention but from, from Superman and Clark Kent? Like what's his intent? What is the movie telling us about that? I, I think there's something to the, is he really Clark or is Clark the secret identity or Superman the secret identity? Okay. Yes. Right. And I think the one of my favorite scenes in the movie is, and I, I think that Christopher Reeve, of all the people who have portrayed Superman, he does the best because he is Clark and he is Superman and they are separate characters. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the scene where he is hunched over yeah. and meek and talking differently and he takes his glasses off and he sits up. Lois, there's something I have to tell you. I'm really... Um, I mean, I, I was, uh, at first, really nervous about tonight. And he, and he has a different voice. Yeah. He looks different. Yes. Yeah. And you're like, wait, but he, I just watched him. He didn't change. Yeah. But he changed. Yeah. I think that, that he has done the best job. I think all the other Supermen are either good Supermen or good Clarks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does the best job of being both. And I think, I mean, I don't know that they explored it in this movie, but I think the, the interesting part of Superman is the duality about him. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe even more than Batman. I don't know. Maybe we could argue about that. Mm-hmm. But I think that, yeah. that the duality of Clark Kent and Superman is the most interesting part about Superman is a person who ultimately ends up being the most powerful person in the universe, arguably. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, and yet he's like trying to like... You know, write stories, and <laughs> submit deadlines, you know, meet right. these deadlines and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. I think that's the, that's the interesting part about Superman, or yeah. one of them. So, yeah, absolutely. So what do you think he wants? At least, what, is, what, is the, what are the storytellers in this movie telling us? Cause what, and I'll tell you what I'm getting from it. Mm-hmm. What he wants is to follow instructions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that's it. It's pretty, like, pretty flimsy. Like, he doesn't want anything. Hmm. He wants to do good mm-hmm. and do right because I am good. And I'm like, it's kind of that's taut- what it is? It's kind of tautological, right? I want to do good whoa, because... Whoa, 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 whoa. Tautological. All right. So Come on. It, Come on. It's, it's, you it's, knew I didn't know what that was before you said it. All right. Let's just go back. <laughs> just spin around. Hold spin on. Spin the world around. Yeah, go Google on. Dictionary says tautology. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't look it up. But uh, uh, tautology is, uh, you know, making an argument effectively twice, explaining the reasoning for something by saying the exact same thing all over again. I do good because doing good is good. That doesn't actually explain anything. You've just made a circle. You said the same thing twice. And so, again, I think it is very meta. It was about what the world needed, what Hollywood needed to make, Mm -hmm. the kind of figure we needed at the time. Uh, Superman doesn't have... It's, it's not that I don't believe he doesn't have complexity because I think that dual identity yeah. is complexity. I think that's very interesting and to talk about the differences between Clark and Superman and which is authentic, which is real, is that's an interesting question to pose. And Christopher Reeves is actually leaning into that 
but, but the story's not. But the story's not because the story is about him, you know, saving the day. And that means that for what it's worth, Superman does a really interesting balancing act of being the uh, titular character, the most important character, and also a supporting character to the really fascinating characters like Lois. Mm -hmm. Lois is, I remember watching this movie and just loving Lois yeah. because everything about her is great. She can't spell anything. Nothing. She is dogged and tenacious and she's just like shameless and a badass and will get in front of harm's way because that's all she knows how to do and i think superman in this movie is you know because he is good for good's sake it, it sort of elevates the more nuanced background characters into being more important significant characters okay right and i think that's great and that's why i always think of perry it's why i always think of jimmy it's why i always think of lois and it's why i always think of Lex Luthor. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else is elevated by Superman. I feel like everybody else is more interesting than Superman. Than yeah, Superman. and that is what people argue, right? Everybody's more interesting than Superman. So I think that I think that they lose the, the most interesting part of Superman. Like, it's buried, I mean, like, I guess literally buried in the story, in that they set Superman up to be indestructible, right? Yeah. He mm -hmm. flies, he's good, he is perfect. You see that time that he got a bullet into his eyeball? Oh, boy. Did you see that time? Did you see that? <laughs> I'm just good. Like, I the, told you about this. It was in the, Every, it was didn't in I the, tell you he was going to do this? Was, I literally told this, you this guy. It was, it was, in, the, was, it was in the commercial. It was in the commercial? You know, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> he did get shot in his eye. Cool ass movie. <laughs> no. No, it isn't. <laughs> it is can, we not. Just, can we get... You're, you are the judge, damn It's all. not. You are the judge. Uh, uh, you don't is, mean this. Is, is Man of Steel... A better or worse movie. movie than Superman Returns. Oh, man. I, I think they're all 10 out of 10. Wow. It's, it's there just, it is. I'm Equal so biased footed. for Superman. That is truth, justice, Dan. and the Dan I'm way. so biased. Dan. Mm -hmm. Come on now. 10 out of 10. I've a had plus. conversations uh, and arguments. arguments. <laughs> 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 There's no way. you just going to say anything with the Superman logo on it. It's just good. Absolutely. It's all good. Absolutely. Take the worst movie. You put Superman in it. It'll, it'll be the best. That's right. valid. I can't talk to you about Superman. Wait, no, what did you think about Brett Burn? Give me oh. like give me a tweet version of uh, Brightburn. What did you think? Does it fly in the face of Superman or no? Is it, it... It's a compliment to Superman. Like I, part of what I love about Superman stories is the ones that explore the other side. Like, oh, what happens if he lands in Russia instead of mm -hmm, Kansas? Mm -hmm. What happens? You know, injustice is another one. What happens yeah, yeah, when yeah, Superman's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. you know what? Screw this. Yes, I'm gonna just take over the universe. Now, like, oh, that, wait this, a these are the stories I want to hear about Superman. And mm. I think there is that in in Richard Donner Superman, but it's Where? lost. Because Where's Lois it dies. Yes. Uh -huh. He can't stop it. He didn't stop it. Let me yeah. tell you something. We and just made a big he, jump. He Dragon Ball Z yells. Spoiler? Should I, should I, should I, should I said that? No, nah, it's with 78. 78. She comes back. It's comics. <laughs> right. Listen. It's the original timeline. The most exciting part of this movie is when Superman stops being Superman. Mm -hmm. When this dude... Rah! And like loses it and flies off. Like you've never seen him do anything but smile. Yeah. And be like, uh, Miss Lane, G golly, and uh, yeah. gosh, and all that kind of stuff. When that dude flies off and he has to make this decision, which we don't understand why he's even following this rule in the first place, mm -hmm. but he then flies around the earth, which we don't understand how that works. Mm -hmm. You know, and he and he and he, in my opinion, does something really selfish. Mm-hmm. It's a very, very selfish moment for this guy who doesn't lie, doesn't, you know, truth, justice, the American way. Yeah. Where is not lying, truth, justice, the American way of listening to your father and your parents and saving cats when your girl dies? Mm -hmm. That's when we really, like, that, like, that's the movie right there that we got real quick, and then they make it okay. Mm -hmm. Like, he did the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here, grown man, Octavius, going, you couldn't have gone back further? Mm. Because all this conversation about all these oh, people are about no. to die and all this stuff is going to happen and why and why don't you and so-and-so and so. You go back enough to save your girl oh, and no. only your girl. Oh, no. And then you drop off Lex Luthor and, you know, like, 
There's a press release the Who day is this after guy? he brings the day after the fault line breaks and he brings Lois back. There's a there's a there's a, a press conference and like how Lo, I saw Lois die. How did you bring Lois back? Well, I flew around the Earth enough times fast enough to bring her back. I I turned time backwards and brought her back. Cool. But my I, I my just mom's noticed, dead though. I just noticed racism still exists and slavery still happened. And uh, there's this whole John in 1945. I don't know, but what you know about that? Right. And then Superman, here's the 2019 version. Mm-hmm. Superman gets canceled. Okay. Mm. He's canceled. Mm. All right. And, okay. Uh, take us there. And send, he himself is sent into the Phantom Zone. Okay. Because <laughs> anyone who gets canceled online gets sent into oh! the Phantom Zone. Oh! Right. That's how it goes. And then, and then we have to the reckon. Phantom Zone. The Phantom Zone is real. It is real. And then That's we all need we is. need to reckon with whether or not that was the correct choice. Can someone who stands for truth, justice, and the American way be perfect? Or do they have vulnerabilities and flaws? You already know my answer to this question. We're all bad guys. Yes. Yeah. We're all bad guys. And that is a grown man Octavius watching this movie. I'm looking at it going, no flaws. And then you show me the flaw at the end of the movie, that, but you make that the heroic moment. And I'm like, this movie's freaking upside down. Mm. Like, everything the movie it says that it stands for, it actually doesn't. Mm. In the most, what's supposed to be the most heroic moment, he does the antithesis of all those things and does the most selfish thing he's done the entire movie. And then you go, ba 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 and everything's great. Yeah, for what it's worth, the movie... It's not... That's... What? Who is this guy? The movie really wraps up right after that. Because you gotta... Because now, (laughs) I've finally seen, for the first time, Cal L. Clark Kent Superman's character. Mm. He's the guy that, when he's pushed up against the wall, is going to use... This Superman, from this movie, Mm -hmm. is gonna use his powers to do what he wants, and only for him. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that's what Superman is supposed to be. Hmm. Does that you guys buy it? You got any thoughts on that? I mean, man, ten of out of ten, one hundred percent. Absolutely, yeah, one hundred percent. Tomatoes. It's a great movie. Thanks for watching. Yeah, uh, you know, Man of Steel explores that idea too. Yeah, just it does. flipped in the way that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Because at the end of Man of Steel, he doesn't save a life; he takes one. He does. Yes, because because and that's the that's the interesting thing about Superman. That's why I love Superman as a character is that he's got all the powers of a god. I think you said this to me at some point. Yeah. He's got all the powers of a god, but he's not God. Yes, mm-hmm. right. And so what? So and the that's most him playing story. God at the end of that movie. It is. Yeah. And but also dis, but it's also see this is the duality again. It, he's playing God but he's now human too. Mm, because mm, he's disobeying. Mm, like mm, they mm. play the the Jorel Marlon Brando like you must not interfere with human life and he's like screw it. I'm yeah. going to fly around the world backwards. Yeah. 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 And that like that's that like I have the powers of a god and I'm going to act as selfish as a human. Sure. That's that duality again in Superman. Mm-hmm. So that's what I find interesting about about the character. I think the yeah. most interesting the most interesting thing about Superman as a character for me is what it reveals about the storyteller. And and mm. I think Superman is made to be perfection incarnate. Okay. And the storyteller, depending on who's telling that version of the story, what do they think that looks like? Uh-huh. Do they think it exists? Uh. Frank Miller telling a story and using a Superman in a story for, for Dark Knight Returns, it, you know, it is a very different idea about how right. he operates effectively as a tool. Yes. It is a t- entirely different from if you read a, a story is written by you know a lot of modern uh, comic book writers. Uh, the, some of the most recent stuff from Scott Snyder's run right now. The old you know Justice League. Mm-hmm. You know what does perfection look like? Is it something where he for some reason evades a- accountability because he's just the greatest, uh, or is he actually doing everything he's supposed to do because it's the best he can do and he's extremely powerful and we need to have hope. Yeah. And I think I think it really reveals coming from the guy who likes man thing stories because of the meta narrative. I like that character because what it says about the time and the place Mm. and the people who told those stories. Yes. And I think that's the most fascinating thing to me. In that way, Clark and Superman are a device. They are deus ex machina. Mm. And then the question is, is that good or bad? Right? And uh, for me, the, the 1978 movie, the Superman movie, I love it because it's just optimistic and unabashedly so. Mm. And for me, especially right now, I need that. Okay. I do I do need that. And as much as I want to pick those scabs and see what's under the surface and ask questions like, well, that visual was would he really vivid. do that? Thank you. My bad. <laughs> it's just his little kryptonite got close to me and I just, uh, you know, as much as I, I know I could do those things, I could ask those questions, 
Part of me just doesn't want to. I just want to sit with it being simple and kind and gleaming. Because I don't have a lot of references for that right now. Mm -hmm. You know? I love that Superman has the longevity to be able to use him that way too, right? So he's existed since 1938. So there's been yeah. so many writers that have been able to take him as a character and use him as a tool or a puppet or a mm. symbol or a, you mm. know whatever those are. Batman, by contrast, Batman has always been Batman. He's always been the same Batman. You know, you everybody so? does. Everybody does an interpretation of him, but the but the core of Batman remains. Like the core of Batman from Crime Alley. You know, I'm doing this because I don't want this to happen to other people again. Mm -hmm. I'm wounded. I'm acting the way. I'm a human. I'm doing everything I know how amongst all the gods of the Justice League. Mm -hmm. but that that has remained intact. Superman has been very different. I mean, if you even even the the three major movie eras of Superman, the Christopher Reeve. Uh, Brandon Ruth and Henry Cavill are very different Superman. Mm -hmm. Very because of Donner, Snyder, you know, because of the, uh, the people telling it. So I, I yeah. buy that, that he can be all these symbols. You know, in the, in the 30s, he was fighting Nazis. Yeah. You know, like that's what he was around for was oh, to yeah. be able to say, we have a Superman too. Yeah. You know, and this is what he looks like. And so I love the idea that Superman is, is a vehicle for that. Um, and I think that be, like he's part of the blandness of Superman that people don't like allows him to be the like, all right, what story do you want to be able to tell through him? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you're right. He's he, in, in that way. He's kind of a blank canvas. Yeah. You can, you can do a lot of different things for you, project things onto him. And I, frankly, I think it's BS when people say that Superman is not a complex character because he's just too powerful or he's too perfect. Why do you say that? Well, because I think it, it, all of this is in the realm of, uh, imagination. And if you think that that's the case, then you're just not imagining hard enough. You, whoa, whoa, wait, you, you haven't on. gotten... Wait, 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 I'm sorry. I don't buy that. You, what I, can I tell you what I just heard? You may. I, I didn't finish. Let me... I, I'll, I'll give you the end of go that. For it, right? Go for it. Go so for like, it. So like, if this is all happening in comic books, right? If this is... These are stories that are being told in comics and in graphic novels and in movies and in cartoons, right? And people say, well, he, you know, he's too perfect. He's too powerful. Well, that's BS because he always has a new guy to go up against and he does falter. And I think a lot of people who have critique against him as a character probably don't read his comics. They just don't see what he goes up against. They don't see that part of his uh, uh, dilemma is similar to Peter Parker, which is, I got to be there for my wife, Lois. I need to be a good husband. I need to take care of my family. But I also have the abilities to go uh, uh, fight you know, intergalactic punch weapons. A universe. <laughs> I got to go punch a universe. And it, you know, not just Peter Parker, it actually reminds me of uh, conflict faced by T'Challa, the Black Panther. When the Black Panther joins the Avengers and then returns to Wakanda and all the, the denizens of Wakanda are like, where the hell have you been? You are a king. And in that way, I think uh, Clark has his own battle. And I also think sometimes Clark gets lost in his identity. Who am I? I don't even know who I am today. And I, I say that the limits of imagination, the stories that are told, you can do infinite things with that. So to say that he's not complex, I just don't buy that. I, I don't think that that's, uh, uh, I don't think that's an accurate uh, assessment of the character because you can have as many limitations as you want, right? You just need to dream them up. You've got to come up with them. You've got to stretch your mind there. Can, okay, can I can I respond to something? Yeah, what do you have? What I'm You seem like attacked by this sentiment. Well, what I feel is what I heard you say yeah. is if you think this, it's because you are insufficient. Why what how would if you think that Superman is overpowered and that makes him that's because you don't have enough creativity. Yeah, actually I'm gonna double down on that. But how can you tell me I don't think what you think because I have a deficiency? How does that work? How is it my fault that I don't see it your way? Well, I don't think I don't think this is. First of all, I think it's getting a little too grave now. I what think, does grave me? I mean, like it's, it's it's the the mood has gotten solemn, and I want to bring back to truth, justice, and the American way. Well, I'm I'm responding to what you're saying because this is what I actually have to say about. The I'm topic. saying I'm saying this is a creative medium, mm -hmm. and people can tell incredible stories in which virtually anything can happen. Truly, anything can mm -hmm. happen. And uh, for someone to say that Superman is overpowered is to say that there is nothing that can stop him. And that's not true. Okay. And so I would say the person who makes the assessment has limited themselves by making the assessment. I, I think part of, the, part of the trouble of having a character for 100 years is that there's going to be bad stories about him. Like, there can't be 100 years of good stories. And so there, to me, the most boring Superman stories is where he just punches his way through a, yeah. an arc. You know, it's like... Yeah. 
yeah, all right. Like he's just punching because he's good at punching. Yeah, those are the worst Superman stories because they're boring. Because it's like that's the least interesting part about him is his muscles. <laughs> you know, yeah, like definitely the the most interesting part of Superman, I think, to me is you know there's there's a in Superman Peace on Earth by Alex Ross. There's a there's a scene where he goes, I'm gonna solve world hunger because like you know I could probably do that. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna try. And he, and he plants fields of grain and he starts giving grain away to people so that they can eat. And he goes to a third world country and he gives it away. And the dictator is like, um, if you give this to my people, I'm just going to steal it. And, he, and Superman's like, no, you're not. And he's like, okay, well, then I'll just shoot the people. Hmm. And Superman's like, ah, uh, now what do I do? There's more going on. Yeah, like I have all these powers and now like, because mm-hmm. the dictator is basically like, you're going to have to leave some point. Mm-hmm. And, that, and then what are you going to do? You can't be everywhere at once. And he's like, shoot, I can't. And like, those are the interesting stories about Superman. Right. And I think that, so kind of back to the, back to the film, like you, you brought this point up earlier, it is a two-film arc. It's mm-hmm. not a one-film arc. This film, if you view it as one film, it's about corny Superman. Like, ta-da, he does something selfish. It's a Superman film. But the second film is a Clark film. Mm-hmm. It's all about him being like, I'm giving up the Superman thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you look at them as two, like as chapter one and chapter two of the story, then I think it becomes more interesting. I think if you look at it as film one by itself, you're like, yeah, it, you know, it was like a happy ending kind of film sure. about a guy who has lots of powers. And of course, things turned out well for him. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. of course he did the selfish thing. But if you look at it from like, oh, he's, but he wrestles with stuff too. Yeah. I think that's what, you know, that's what people generally like about Marvel versus DC is the humanness of the Marvel yeah. characters versus the godlikeness of the DC characters. Certainly. And I think Superman has a bad rap because lots of boring stories have been told about his godlike character and not yeah. his human-like character. And I think that's, yeah. that's specifically the thing that I am responding to about what I'm hearing you say, Adam, and what does make me kind of go, wait a minute, hold on a second. I'm allowed to think what I want to think and feel what I want to feel. And it's not, a, it's not some sort of like, like knock to me because I feel that way. It's I read a story, I watched a movie, I saw a thing. I think it's corny. Mm-hmm. I think it's good. Mm-hmm. I think he's overpowered. I think he's a little too. I don't think this makes sense. And it's not somehow because I cannot be like someone else or I cannot achieve some level of understanding. Mm-hmm. It's the lens that I see it through, mm-hmm. and the lens that I'm seeing it through is the story you're telling me is of a guy who can pretty much do anything and this is my subjective opinion about it. Uh-huh. So if you're telling me a better story cuz I do think that there's ways to tell good superman stories. And like you're saying Dan, if the story is I'm smarter than you, you know, I, like what did what did your else say? Everything that there is to know from all the 28 realms. Of the, like you have all the information in the world, mm-hmm. like I think that that's boring. Like that story for that guy is boring. And I love the point that you're bringing up about what it says about who's telling the story. Yeah. Because I've never looked at Superman like that. And that was really insightful to me. Like, so what does it more so say about the storyteller? Mm -hmm. That's something I relate to more than you don't like it. It's because you're not smart enough. It's Mm -hmm. more so like, maybe you don't agree with me, the storyteller. Maybe you don't see it the way I see it. And I think, for some Superman stories, I go, yeah, I guess I just don't see the world the way you see it. But the contrast between Batman and Superman, those stories where those two different guys are approaching things two different ways, those really connect to me because it's like, oh, here's a guy who can pretty much do anything. Mm-hmm. We'll just, like Superman, just do the right thing. And Batman's like, fam, <laughs> what are you talking about? You're a god. Like, that doesn't work. And I think maybe that's part of the way I live and the way I walk and talk and interact with the world, just do the right thing. Like, mm-hmm. I don't relate to that. I don't sure. get to that because just in, in Batman, in contrast, is like, man, sometimes you got to do stuff a way that's not necessarily the easiest way because everybody can't do what you can do. But again, like you're saying, what is the what is someone doing with this character like we talk about you can't tell somebody else what to do with their toys yeah you know what i mean if the toys have been given to you you're going to play with them how you want to play with them and all i can do is critique or respond to it mm-hmm. and i'm going to look at you know these superhero movies kind of with that perspective too like oh so what does this say about james gunn yes you know yeah what does it say about uh, I was going to say Kevin Feige but he's not direct but you I get, I get what you're saying yeah 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 what does it say about 
Um, who's writing Superman right now? Um, uh, uh, he just uh, left. Bendis is writing Bendis. Superman right now. This is... Yeah, yeah Brian if, Michael Bendis. It's kind of like... He's writing everything for DC right now. In a sense, it's kind of like if you're God. Let's, I'm going to hand you Jesus Christ. I'm going to hand you God. What are you going to do with the world? I'm going to put him in a fluorescent turtleneck jumpsuit. <laughs> game that's what christ is doing now <laughs> that's what's up <laughs> i think we should probably do you know about our letter grades i don't okay so everybody this is how we we do uh letter grades in comic book junto um instead of going it's a 97 or a 52 i don't know the difference between a 52 and a 54 mm -hmm. and a 56 mm -hmm. but the old school not old school. Maybe this is how they still do it. Um, a, B, C, D, F. I understand that. Mm -hmm. If you get an A in school, this is one of the best. This is the highest grade you can get. F in school, it's the lowest grade you can get. So when it comes to movies, I think that it makes sense. Like, is this one of the best movies I've ever seen? One of the worst movies I've ever seen? And a C is an average movie. So A, B, C, D, F. Mm -hmm. Grown adult version watching this movie now. What's your letter grade for it? 100% of Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you already said it. A plus. A plus. Okay. I mean, so okay. In, in all seriousness, you know, it, it literally changed my life. Like mm. part of, you know, there's a lot of things that contributed to this, but part of why I try to do the right thing now is because Superman did. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, as a figure then, Fair as enough. a vehicle, that's the job. And Superman did it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. What you got, Adam? You know, I, I, I think, I, w I would argue it is impossible for me to say I'm going to grade this without understanding the context of when it came out, sure. what it was, when I watched it, sure. when I was a kid. It is, it is literally impossible for me to get rid of those rose-colored lenses. And for me, this movie is an A. Mm. because One of the best movies you've ever seen. Yes, because... It was one of the first, it introduced me to a medium. It was mm -hmm. one of the first superhero movies I've ever seen in my life. It absolutely defined my entry into uh, liking comics, but in like a mainstream mm -hmm. way, right? It didn't feel nerdy or weird or off kilter. It was just like, everybody loves this. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, and watching it, uh, most recently reminded me of the same reasons why uh, over the weekends on Saturday mornings, I pour a bowl of cereal and I watch Sailor Moon because mm. it's pure. <laughs> it is pure and light and good and colorful and hokey and it's just there and having a great time. And I'm thinking about my relationship with my, my pop and it's like everything about it is great. It transported me to a very good place. Yeah. It's bananas. It's yeah. batshit crazy. Yeah. We haven't even talked about Gene Hackman's performance as Lex Luthor and pulling his wig off. He got snatched at the very end of his film. He did it to himself. He snatched himself. <laughs> and why? Lex Luthor. Yeah. Why did you do that? I. But, you know, there's there's just a component of it that's just, it, it has made truly an indelible mark in my life. Mm -hmm. And so it's very hard for me to remove all of that context. It, it, it's an A for me. It really is. Okay. I love this movie. And re-watching it, just brought that back. Yep. We're talking about it right now, I want to watch it again. <laughs> it's just infinitely rewatchable. Yeah. I give this a C. Yeah? For Krypton? <laughs> yeah. Just because of Marlon Brando saying Krypton over and over again, I give it a C. No, I'm giving it a C because of all the things you said, I remember I can see the video store in my head. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't know what a video store is, they're these little rectangular boxes mm -hmm. that you'd put in another rectangular box. Check the check you, check a dictionary. Yeah. Yeah. W what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You put yeah. a dictionary in there? Oh, yeah. Read a dictionary. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but and you know, we go to the video store, my mother and I like so I feel that the music, the music is an A mm -hmm. for me. Oh yeah. yeah John Williams. John I mean, Williams. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I feel it. I'm excited about it. I watch it. You know, the things that hold up the most to me for these movies are when Superman's running around being Superman. I'll get you. I'll take care of you. Here's your cat. Here's your thing. You know, the bad guys. And it's really campy, but it's fun mm -hmm. and hits him with thing. It's like bad. What do you say? Bad vibrations or something? Bad like vibrations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's when, he, when he got hit on the head and then it, it's shaking him. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. There's, I was doing a lot of smiling yeah. during this movie. Yeah. You know, especially... When Lois and I was gonna call him Clark, Lois and Clark are flying. Yeah, that it's whole great. scene. 
I'm smiling oh. ear to ear <laughs> until. Hold up. Now she does. Until. She does recite that whole poem. Can you she, read my mind? I was like, I do not remember this part. Can you read my mind? You know what it is that you do to me? I don't know who you are. Just a friend from another star. I don't remember what she is was. This? She was spitting bars. I don't <laughs> know if you noticed, but this was a thing I forgot about. But she was rhyming. Yep. She like, does a whole po- yeah. She ruins the moment for me Why is Cl- why, why is Superman dropping her It's like why would you drop her Are you just like like What's going on fam You can make sure that The girl don't fall Lois Lane This, this movie should have been called Lois Lane's uh, No good very bad day <laughs> Everything bad happens Don't ever get into a helicopter she Don't fly spell. with this dude yeah, and what and what is she Rapist writing? Rapist only has Rapist, one P. Brazier. Yeah. It's got the ethnic <laughs> angle, and I'm, so <laughs> what? But that's what is this? But you know what? That it's go going back to the storyteller thing. Right. That is brilliant, low key satire. Yeah. of journalism. Uh-huh. And if it bleeds, it leads, and yeah. everything there, everything that the Daily Planet is telling under uh, uh, these stories under Perry, it's all trash, mm-hmm. you know. But it's what we want. And why was Lois out there driving that car around, recording, talking about some? Yeah, she's <laughs> driving and holding the mic. What is she doing? She's a reckless driver. Yeah. Anyway, but when I start thinking about the movie, and I start. For having a junto about it and asking questions and what is the intention what is the obstacle what are they trying to tell me what's the message here then i start going oh wait a minute hold on i don't know if this is a good movie i think i have good memories i think i have a good relationship with superman i'm fond of the character and even this conversation it's even shown me some of the great stuff about him and more of the things i want to see people do with him Mm -hmm. show me his limitations show me what he can't do show me who he really is when he can't just punch the problem even the whole idea like this is why we love geek culture this is why we love comic books yeah this is why we take it seriously we call ourselves geek culture philosophers welcome you're a geek culture philosopher now um because what do you say Glad to be here. Yeah, because we get it makes us think about things and talk about things and challenge one another and see where we agree and disagree. And I have a whole new lens on how to approach Superman and approach what kind what it means about the writer based off of the character, all because of a guy in red tights, mm-hmm. in red uh, blue tights, red boots, and a red cape back in seventy eight. Yeah, indeed. But I give it a C. Did he make his own costume, Dan? Because, you know, <laughs> you know those, that's what was in his cradle, his yeah. spaceship that looks like a Christmas tree topper. You right? know, when, when he went to the Fortress of Solitude and he opened up his backpack, you yeah. saw like a little red and yellow and red piece. I'm like, he didn't get it there. Yeah. Where they never showed us where he got it. Well, yeah, he man. had that fabric that tw- when that- he was a baby. Right. And because he was the only Kryptonian uh, who <laughs> had any color in his outfit, right? Right. He, was, he really was. And, <laughs> that was uh, the only color other than black and white. In all of Krypton. That's right. And shiny. And shiny. Yes. Shiny is also a very yeah. important color in Krypton. <laughs> Krypton looks like a lot of uh, friends of mine who have houses by the shore. It's all crystal. It's like crystal everything. Krypton right? looked like your freezer when you then left stuff in there too long. <laughs> yeah. Krypton looks like freezer brain, freezer brain the planet. It's true. and But I, I was curious, you know, the, he... he just gains this outfit. That's yeah. a thing, right? And uh, apart from gaining this outfit seemingly out of the blue, he can uh, uh, metamorph into it. He just kind of transform into it at, at any he given just, time. And really. why did he jump out that window and nobody saw him jump out that window? Uh, I don't know. Unclear. He's Superman. He's Superman. Okay, and right. one of my favorite parts of this whole movie is Lex Luthor's plan, you know, to <laughs> real, real uh, estate. The the plan is great, and then also his plan to lure Superman and then observe Superman. So Lex, I love that. My question thing is, I forgot about was that goofball that he hangs out with all the time. Otis, yes, <laughs> Otis totally State forgot Eaton. about. Otis. And the soundtrack too. Like this is another place where the soundtrack was so good. Where every time you see Otis, boom, 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 yes, boom, 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 yeah, 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 yes. yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It's so the goofy so soundtrack. Silly. Yeah. I, I completely forgot about Otis. Where's Otis right now? Where's Otis in the comics? Yeah, I don't know. What's he I don't doing? Know. I don't know. Miss Tessmacher is somewhere, right? She's in some series or 
Yeah. Miss Desmarker. Uh, I believe so. Uh, Supergirl, maybe? Something I, like yeah, that. I believe so. I believe Did Ms. you guys watch Supergirl right. movie? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. I don't think I have. No. I rented that one, too. I forgot about that one. Yeah, I don't remember that one at all. Mm -mm. Maybe in your free time. To look up the Supergirl. Uh, Maybe in my free time. I need to watch, clearly I need to watch Superman 2 because I need to see the second half of this. Yes. You know? How does this stack up to Zack Snyder, Superman, Man, Man of Steel? I hated Man of Steel. I really did. I already knew that. I knew you were going to say that. I appreciate, I appreciate what you've, you've said. In, 100% right, 10 out of 10. Yeah. I appreciate that you've, you've, you've made it clear to me that that is a 10 out of 10 gold star movie. Right. But uh, for me, I, I felt it was so dour. Honest to God, because that movie made my dad sad, that's like there's no going back for me you know I watched it you hurt my dad <laughs> you made my dad upset I'll never forgive you for that yeah and that's that's just that, that's where it is for me I like the trailer more than I like the movie because I because I think it betrays the optimism of Superman like sure it's, it's such a dark movie that it's like yeah this is an interesting take on Superman but it feels like an Elseworlds telling of Superman sure hmm. um, I like the trailer because when I first saw the trailer for Man of Steel it was sun drenched Kansas field, and mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, that's an interesting take on mm -hmm. Superman." Like, let's show the let's talk about Kansas more. It was very abstract. It was, and it was beautiful. And then the movie was just very dark, and so. not like that at all. The movie yeah. was like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, it was like uh, uh, flying through buildings. I yeah. guess it people was just like getting it was. killed. That's it was like DBC. That's the short. Sure. That's the shortcoming of that. It's like, dude, you just going to destroy everything, and then you know, and then just show up at the Daily Planet that, later. That influenced a lot of big superhero movies going forward. Yeah. Because yeah. Th after that, after Man of Steel came out, and all of that feedback was right. collected, now you have the Avengers in Age of Ultron saying, "Did you clear out the building? Yep, there's no one there." You yeah. know, like yeah, yeah. now you're making a point. To not have all of that carnage, right? And it was the driving motivation in uh, Batman versus Superman. Too. Yes, right. Dawn of Justice was Bruce yes. Wayne just being like, he can't do that, right? And yeah. that was the whole driving point of the movie, right? That's right. Which is another movie Adam and I disagree upon, but right. I, but the short, <laughs> the short version of that is, I get it. Yeah. Bruce Wayne looks up and goes, absolutely not, uh -huh. no way. Well, there is one thing that I do like about uh, Batman v Superman. Joe coming. Bruce Wayne and I, neither of us liked Man of Steel. <laughs> it is abundantly clear to me that Bruce Wayne and I share the same oh, opinion man. on Man of Steel. So he's right about that. Okay. He's right All about right. that. All right. Yeah. I'm with you, Batfleck. Come back. <laughs> I, I think that's it. Come back. I think that's it. All right. So moving forward in Superman movies, we don't have a Superman movie right now. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's coming. We don't know what's to be, you know, coming down the pipe. What do you want to see for Superman in the movies moving forward? A mustache, a mustache removal, <laughs> CG upper lip. Wow. Super stash? Super stash. <laughs> Super stash. The movie. More Marlon Brando? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know about that. I, I want to see, like, I want to see Superman. What I like about Superman is the, is the universal scale, right? He's not your friendly neighborhood Superman. Hmm. Um, so the, the, like, he saves cats out of trees. Like, that's cute. Right. Um, and, but it's like, it's. It's also what I love about the Spider-Man movie, though, especially Far From Home. It's, it's, it, the opposite is what I love about Superman movies. It's not Far From Home. It, it is like he is flying through the universe, making his own universe, punching yeah. a universe. Like, yeah. I want to see a universal scale movie, um, and I want to see him up against stuff that he can't conquer. Right. Yeah. That's what's compelling about him. Yes. yes. Yeah. I can definitely agree with that. I definitely want to see. That's what I want for Superman. I want it, but that's what I like. That's what I like in stories. Mm -hmm. Seeing how you deal with stuff that's difficult, that's hard, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I like about Superman when he, like, you know, just just the, him saying that mental part of like all these powers I have and I couldn't even save them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. exciting to me. Yeah, you know, is it is it showing off if a bird does just does what it's capable of do, right. it's capable of doing, exploring that. That's exciting. Am, am, am I American? Am I human? Are these my people? Sure. You know, or is like, th these are questions that his powers don't really play a role in. You know, just the whole, like you said, some of the Spider Man, you can't be everywhere at one time. Right. You know, dealing with stuff like like Superman, uh, what, is the, what is the book? Alex Ross? Uh, Peace, on Earth. Peace yeah. on Earth. Peace on Earth. Peace on Earth. That whole concept is like, some people just want to see the world burn. What you going to do with that? Sure. 
Sure. And yeah. then you've, you've got yeah, Superman and Kingdom Come and yes. Mark Waite's Kingdom Come. And you have a really different look at what, what happens when you lay your work down and you step back. Right. And you let a new generation just do their thing. Uh, right. Does it go well? I, I want to see Superman, the, another Superman movie on a universal scale. I want to see him palling around with uh, the Justice League and the Lanterns, yeah. right? I want to see him visiting other worlds, and I want to see Superman learn that there is, there are some struggles that superpowers cannot resolve. Yeah, yeah. And there is not one morality. Hmm. And when he he's like the perfect moral compass, he's going to get to a place where it just doesn't work that yeah. way. Yeah, I love that. I love what you just said mm -hmm. because that seems like the ultimate thing that the character as Superman as it's presented is his naivete. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like that's that's the area. What you gotta say? You well, look this is where this is where DC really missed the boat and Marvel was like, we'll take that because that's Cap and Iron Man. Yeah. Right. It's no the, doubt. They DC, yeah. if they would have yeah. done that with Superman and Batman, it would have been perfect. Yes. yes. And they didn't and they missed it. And DC and Marvel was like, well, well, Civil War, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, exactly. But I'm thinking, like, what, what happens when Superman... Should you, did you see Midsommar? No. Yeah. Midsommar <laughs> oh, boy. It introduces some really funky rituals, and they are very important to these people. But for uh, right. an onlooker, they're right, like... Right, 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 right. Uh -huh. But, like, what happens when Superman comes up against one of those rituals? Mm -hmm. Hey, you can't do that. First of all, hey, Man of Steel. This is how we okay? are. This is how we get down. This is what we do. This is our culture. Yeah. Well, I... you know, Because... <laughs> Yes, th this is the stuff that I would love to see presented to Superman. When you can't, because I think there's a there's a concept of Superman that he's right. Mm -hmm. Like, the it's created like your perspective, Jor El's perspective, Ma and Pa Kent's perspective that they have passed down to you is right. That's the standard. Yeah, everything else is substandard if it's not up to that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and it doesn't leave room for culture. Doesn't leave room for. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, agency doesn't sure. leave room for representation and diversity and differences. It doesn't leave room for any of those things. Yeah. What it ultimately says is, I'm the ultimate authority on what right is, and I want to see Superman and Clark Kent interact with that and go, oh no, who am I now? Yeah. So, all right. So, to continue on that thread, to your point earlier, Adam, it's the storyteller that really makes that interesting. So who tells that story? Like who should direct mm, that? I have who an answer. Write that? Okay, I know exactly go. what I want. I'm oh, so man. glad that you served that up. Let's go. Have you both watched The Good Place? Yes. yes. I want the people who make The Good Place okay. to tell me a Superman story. Oh. Because what The Good Place does you put so, me onto this dance. so exquisitely is it, it deals with that difficulty, that, that nuance, mm -hmm. how hard things are even when you're trying to do the right thing and yeah. how difficult it can be. But it maintains its levity. It maintains its optimism. Mm -hmm. It stays positive even when it is soul-crushingly difficult. Yeah. And that's the story that I want because Superman oh, for me is uplifting even when it's hard yep. and you can have hope even when it's hard we to just have made hope. the best superman movie ever just that's now. what yeah, I, the team that makes the good place i want that team to make a superman story that's great that's what i want who directs this i don't actually yeah, I, now i'm being what's called your out name? what's, your know, name? what's the book the what's the uh it's on your desk um very colorful uh the um, Say more. Say more. Stephen uh, King. No. Uh, Cameron. It, uh, Pennywise. Uh, 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 <laughs> Avatar. Um, no. Wachowskis. No. Bill Murray in a lot of his movies. Oh, you're talking about uh, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. Yeah. Right. Wes Anderson. A Wes Anderson. <laughs> a Wes Anderson <laughs> directed with the Good Place writers. Huh? Oh, boy. Huh? So who plays Superman in that one? Uh, um, that's interesting. Muhammad T Ali. Tina Fey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rihanna. <laughs> yeah, I'm just throwing out stuff. I'm just trying to, you know, go off of, like, I like the, I, I know they, they would never do that, but I think, I do think the, the concept of playing with morality, because that seems like the one, that, like, that's his, that's really his kryptonite. Yes, being naive certainly you know yeah. like th that's his blind spot of mm -hmm. like what do you what do you mean i don't under that's why he and batman always have these kind of looking at him like i don't understand you they yeah. become friends but he's like bro i don't i don't get it sure you know sure yeah 
Yeah, and on top of that, you know, he's always the leader of a team, but nobody ever asks Superman how he's doing. You just assume that he's doing great. Yeah. He's Superman. What is it? What are his mental health issues? Certainly. Yeah. But What's he got going on? It's pretty rough. Yeah. Absolutely. I like the idea of Superman as a, as a vehicle for a morality story. Like, I, it, part of what I didn't like about, what was the last Batman film? The, the Batman last Nolan. Batman Superman? No, the last Justice Nolan Justice League? Um, the oh, Nolan one. Dark Knight Rises. Rises. Yeah. I didn't like it because I didn't think it was a Batman story, but I thought it was a great story about terrorism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the effect that terrorism has and batman was the vehicle to tell that that's story. the story that he wanted to tell yeah exactly which is like i'm, I'm down for that because sure. i like that story i just wish there was more batman in it. But, yeah. yeah but a super like a story about morality using superman as a vehicle mm -hmm. i mean that's pretty ripe yes yeah. i like yes. that yes write it dan i like that do it dan <laughs> <laughs> that's good you got i think we can wrap it up at that point i like it what else you got that's all I got. I mean, one thing I would love to do is just fly around this studio as fast as po possible backwards and take back that that the uh, that tension that I created for you. No, no, this I, is comic book junto. It's normal. I know, but I'm being selfish now, and I'm just going to reverse time. <laughs> this is about me, right? I hear what you're saying, right? But this is about me. Yeah, I want it. I'm not going to go past that to like you know do anything else different. I'm going to stop right at the part that serves me personally. Yes, and then we'll just let yes. you guys else, everybody else, figure it out. I just well. I'll well, I will say then I, I I did I don't think and didn't intend to say that you are deficient. I think you are super. Man, I love you. I was just gonna leave it there. Cause you I said I super like I'm in the middle of something. I said I said super, weird I said super and you said man, and I thought that was perfect. I thought yeah. it worked really nicely. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh Dan, let people know where they can find you on the internet and what they should what they can ask you about. At Dan Mall on Twitter. Uh, danmall.me on the webs uh, ask me about Superman okay alright at Octavius A. Newman at Comic Book Junto at Adam Tedder. what can people ask you about uh, they can ask me about voiceover because that's the stuff that I do mm -hmm. and outside of that you know producing podcasts and things of that nature mm -hmm. talking about geek culture hosting things all that stuff mm -hmm. Adam what you got uh, at Adam Tetris on Twitter, you can find me uh, under the same name on Instagram, and you can ask me about the macabre man thing. <laughs> you see my, I don't, <laughs> you see my shirt, Man Thing Minute. You see Man Thing Minute. It's a new Man Thing Minute coming. I got the Method Man Wu Tang Method Man, man Thing Method Man Thing. You know I keep that thing on me. <laughs> that Man Thing. <laughs> yes, you. All right. Yes, you do. All right. <laughs> so that's it. At Octavius A. Newman. At Adam Tetris. At Dan Mall. Um, ask us questions, comic book junto at comic book junto. Send us emails, comic book junto at barefruit.com. Um, that's it. We love you guys. Until next time, peace. <laughs> <laughs>